Math 98, section 10.5, we are graphing some quadratics. So y equals x squared, that's just our basic uh, parent function of a quadratic. And I just want you to think about what the graph of that looks like. And it looks like this. It's a parabola going up like this. It has this vertex. The vertex is a place where the shape changes direction, right? It's going down, and then it hits that, and now it's going up. Um, so it has a vertex. It also, uh, I didn't draw it great, but these are symmetrical. If I, if I try and draw this a, a little better, I'll do my, do my best. Uh, that's not much better. But these are symmetrical across that line. So right here, this is a line of symmetry. And that, that line of symmetry is sometimes called, often called, an axis of symmetry. So every parabola has a vertex and an axis of symmetry. If I bring up uh, so something like something like this, I can see that vertex is at 3, 1, and the axis of symmetry is here, 1, 2, 3. And notice it is when x is equal to 3. If I were to graph x equals 3, um, that's what it looks like. And I'm actually going to, just for visual niceness that's the axis of symmetry x equals three right there and every single um quadratic has one they're all symmetrical across that axis of symmetry one thing i do want to add here is if i've got a negative value out front of the square that parabola is going to go down still has a vertex still has an axis of symmetry the other thing, uh, one of the other things to think about is the x-intercepts. In other words, if I graph a parabola, the places where it hits the x-axis, those are called the x-intercepts. Uh, where it hits the y is called the y-intercept. But the x-intercepts happen, notice when the height is 0, right? The y value is here. It's here. So when y equals 0, we get x-intercepts. And we can talk about the, the x-values of those spots and actually we have been we've been solving for those as we've been solving for quadratics so if i said i had this y equals uh, x squared minus 2x minus 12 and i want to know the intercept the intercepts the x intercepts i'd say let y equal zero so i'd solve this equation zero equals x squared minus 2x minus 12. oh my gosh we can factor we could also use quadratic formula to get there both those are good ways to solve this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little analysis of this graph. Um, I'm going to, and, and from there I'm going to sketch what it looks like. And when I sketch, I want to tell where the vertex is at. I want to tell where the axis of symmetry is at. And I want to tell where the x-intercepts x are at. So I'm going to find those x-intercepts first. Two different ways I could go about doing this. And this one, uh, I can factor. I can see that this is factorable could say uh, x minus 6, x plus 4. So that means x is 6 or negative 4. And notice what I have is my assumption was y was 0. So this actually gives me two points, right? One of them being when x is 6, y is 0. The other being when x is negative 4, uh, y is 0. So I've got those two points. One of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. At here, 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. One of them here at negative 4, 0. So now I've got those. I know that this is this original parabola. Parabola is the shape from a quadratic. That's positive, so it's going to go up. So somewhere in here, the vertex happens. And what's interesting is since this thing is symmetrical, if I try and draw it, I don't know how low it goes, but I do know that since this is at 6, and this is at negative 4, uh, the axis of symmetry has to happen at the middle of those, right? It, so this distance is 5, this distance is 5, so it happens when x equals 1, right? I could average those, and that would give it to me. Find the middle of them. Now here's, uh, here's what, I, what I also want to point out. Like if I can factor, I can find them and average them. I know the axis of symmetry, them being the x-intercept. But I, I could also use the quadratic formula for this. And here's what I want you to notice. I'm not going to do the quadratic formula for this one. I've talked about this in general. Quadratic formula tells me if I was going to solve this, I would go um, 
x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And notice I could break that up into two, uh, two fractions. Right, I could say that this is negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So notice what this is saying. Some point plus some amount, some point minus some amount. This negative b over 2a, that is the center part that tells me where my axis of symmetry is. And this, this part is how far away. That's that 5 distance in this case. So if I want to know where the axis of symmetry is, I can just use this part of the quadratic formula to tell me where it's at. Right? I don't have to do this part at all because this is the middle. That's not a point on here, but that tells me where the, the x part of where the vertex is at. It tells me where this thing folds up on itself. So if I go back and think about that from here, well, negative b over 2a, uh, a is 1 and b is negative 2. That would be negative 2 over 2 times 1. Uh, that's a negative 2. Yeah, that's right. And it's negative b, so negative negative 2. So that's a positive 1, which is where I thought it was going to be. All right, so there's, uh, there's a little something for us to take, take note of. So when y equals 0, finding the x-intercepts. And then to find the axis of symmetry, we can say x equals just this part of the um, quadratic formula. So then the question is, where is that vertex actually at? Like we know the x value is 1. How could we get the y value of it? How do we know how high it is? And I didn't even try and draw this accurately. It's probably further down than it looks. But what we can do is if we know x is 1, let's just plug it back into the original equation and get the y value. Right? So then what I can do for the vertex, it's the point, this is the x part of it along the axis of symmetry. And then if I plug it back into equation, I get the y value of the vertex. So on that original problem uh, that we were doing, what I would do is I just plug 1 into here and I get that value. So let's do analysis on, on, um, on a couple of these. So here's my first one. Um, I'm going to sketch a graph of it, and I'm going to identify each of these things. I'm going to identify the x-intercepts. I'm going to identify the axis of symmetry, and I'm going to tell where the vertex is at. So uh, first thing that I might do, doesn't really matter. I'll find the x-intercepts first. So I'll set this thing equal to zero. And I can try and factor it. I can run it through quadratic formula. All of those things that we have had practice doing um, will, will give me an answer. Well, if it's factorable, it'll give me an answer. Um, but this one, I think I'm going to have to do quadratic formula for. So if I plug this into the quadratic formula, uh, I get negative b plus or minus the square root b squared. Zoom in a little bit so we can see the work minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Negative negative 6 is 6. 4 times 3 is 12 times 2 is 24 over 6. 36 minus 24 is that 12. These are all divisible by 2, so I can write this as 3 plus or minus root 3 over 3. And if I put those both into my um, calculator, I get x is about 1.577 and about 0.423. So if I go to graph, those would be uh, my x-intercepts. I would just approximate where they are on the graph. So there's my x-intercepts. Uh, next thing I'm going to find is the axis of symmetry and the vertex. So remember for the axis of symmetry, I can just use negative b 
over 2a. So that would be negative b, so negative negative 6 over 2 times a. So that's 6 over 6, that's 1. Okay, so the axis of symmetry is the graph is the line x equals 1, straight up and down line when x equals 1. And to get the vertex, well, the x value is 1. I plug the 1 back into here and evaluate it. 3 times 1 minus 6 times 1 plus 2 looks like negative 1. So that would be where my vertex is at. Okay, let's give this one a go. Um, again, I'm going to find the x-intercepts, the axis of symmetry, and the vertex. So let's see, x-intercepts, uh, I could factor this, right? X-intercepts is when y is 0. So this factors to x plus 3 times x plus 1. So x equals negative 3 or negative 1. So 1, 2, 3. There's my x-intercepts right there and there. Axis of symmetry, that's the negative b over 2a. So b is 4, so it would be negative 4 over 2a, 2 times 1, which is negative 2. Now, that makes sense. That's right in the middle of those two points. So there's my axis of symmetry. And then if I want to know where my vertex is, I can plug the negative 2 into here and get a value. You can do it by hand, or if you want to do it on your calculator, you know, just remember to put the thing that you're squaring in parentheses. So negative 2 squared uh, plus 4 times negative 2 plus 3. I get negative 1. So the vertex is at negative 2, negative 1, which would be here. And if I just sketch my graph, just make it look kind of curvy. <laughs> and there it is. All right, let's give this one a go. Um, I think I'll do the vertex part first on this. So my negative b over 2a. That uh, would be negative 4 over negative 1. So my axis of symmetry is x equals 4. If I plug 4 back into here, I get negative 4 squared plus 4 times 4 plus 3. So negative 16 plus 16 plus 3 is 3. So the vertex is the point 4, 3. And then if I go to find the um, x-intercepts, I'm solving this. And I could work on this a little while to try and factor it, or I could just see that I'm going to have to use quadratic formula. And um, if you use quadratic formula for this, you get x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 7. And if you wanted to know where those locations were, you could throw them into your calculator. It's about 4.65 and negative 0.646. Uh, and then you could just graph them where they're at as those intercepts. Do one more example. Okay, axis of symmetry. So the negative b over 2a would be negative 1 over 2 times a is 10. Negative 1 tenth. Hoo-wee. So my vertex is going to be the point negative one-tenth. Now if I plug in negative one-tenth into this thing, I'm going to do it on my calculator. Uh, I'm going to say negative one-tenth gets stored in x. And then I'm just going to type what the equation was, 5x squared. I get 3.95. If you want it as a fraction, you could say 79 20 -ths. I'll just say 3.95 and mix up my representations. What a mess. Great. So I know that it's at negative 10, uh, 3.95. So that's like about here. And that's the vertex. This is positive, right? So it's going up. So I can actually see that there are no x-intercepts. And notice if I try to find them, and I start to run this thing through a quadratic formula, negative, negative 1 squared minus 4 times a 
times c. You can see that that thing is being square rooted is going to be negative. So no solution to that, right? So if that's not solvable, that just means we don't have x-intercepts if it's not solvable over the reals. So it's just a uh, shape like this going up. Give those questions a try. Let me know questions you have in messages or post them in the uh,